Film has been widely unpopulated by female faces in the industry, both on and off camera, but especially ones who take leadership roles. And while that fact remains true, one woman has truly led the way in both film and animation with her incredible talent and grit that continues to help her in her career. Let's talk about an amazing writer, director, producer, and chief creative officer at Walt Disney Animation Studios, Jennifer Lee. Before I begin going on about this outstanding filmmaker, let's go over a few of her accomplishments. Jennifer Lee is the first of many, a record breaker. She is the first female director to direct a Disney animation feature film and the first female director of a feature film to earn more than $1 billion in the box office. And she did this twice for Frozen and Frozen 2. For her work on Frozen, Lee won the Academy Award for Best Animated Film in 2014. In June of 2018, Lee was promoted to Chief Creative Officer of Walt Disney Animation Studios, second in command to only the president of the studio, Clark Spencer. Now let's go back in time a little bit, about 48 years. Lee was born on October 22, 1971 in Barrington, Rhode Island, to Linda Lee and Severio Rebecca. As a child, Lee always wanted to be an animator, but knew her drawing skills were not up to par. She grew up in East Providence with her mother and sister, Amy. After her parents divorced, Lee decided to officially change her name from Rebecca to Lee. Both sisters went to the University of New Hampshire for their bachelors, both for English. Later, Lee would go on to get a Master of Fine Arts in Film at Columbia University, School of the Arts. During her time there, she won multiple awards of excellence for her screenwriting abilities, rightfully so. She also gave birth to her daughter, Agatha Lee Mon, with her husband at the time, Robert Mon. After getting her bachelor's, Lee moved to New York City where she worked as a graphic artist in publishing, designing audiobooks for Random House. Lee continued writing scripts on her own time, and after submitting her film The Roundup to the Nickel Fellowships and Screenwriting Competition in 2009, she was named a quarter finalist, and the film was optioned by Appian Way Productions. Unfortunately, it was never produced, but at least her name was out there, and it would soon become a household one. In 2011, her former Columbia classmate, Phil Johnston, an up-and-coming writer himself, reached out to Lee to help him on a little film he was working on, Wreck-It Ralph. Just a little film, not sure if you've ever heard of it before. This help was supposed to last eight weeks, while Johnston worked on another project, but Lee would be kept on until the film was fully finished. This launched her career, both of theirs actually, as Johnston would go on to write Zootopia and the Wreck-It Ralph sequel, Ralph Breaks the Internet, which he also directed. As for Lee, she would go on to write A Wrinkle in Time and both Frozen films. Here's where Lee really popped off though. In 2013, Frozen was released, a film Lee wrote and co-directed alongside Chris Buck. This would become the film to provide her all of those accolades mentioned before. The film grossed over $1 billion and became an international success. This film is arguably one of the greatest animation films, if not films, in general of all time. And there are many reasons for that. First of all, the film connects to both a wide audience and to Lee personally. The film talks about self-acceptance, something Lee struggled with throughout her life. In 2014, Lee gave the commencement speech to the class of 2014 at her alma mater, the University of New Hampshire. She talked about being bullied as a child, for being poor in a rich town, and for developing a lot of self-doubt because of that. And in her junior year of college, her boyfriend at the time was killed in a boating accident. It was a tragic moment for Lee, but she realized that she couldn't let her self-doubt prevent her from making the most of life. This way of thinking pushed her to apply to Columbia, even when she didn't think she was good enough. She remembered that Phil Johnston, her former classmate, had once told her that he recognized the self-doubt in her and to never write it into her films because she was good enough. With that sentiment, she told the class of 2014 to ban self-doubt from their lives and careers because they were good enough. What a powerful message, and certainly one everyone can connect to. On top of that, the film is immersed in feminism. It stars two female leads, Elsa and Anna, sisters who, despite butting heads at times, always have each other's backs. Many films need to put women in male positions to create strong female characters, but Frozen does this without needing to. Lee centralizes the major stories around Elsa and Anna, and their stories parallel greatly while pushing more themes. On the concept of true love, Anna is placed in a love triangle between two male characters, but the film still focuses on Anna's fight to get her sister back, her truest love of all. The film also talks about isolation, Anna fearing and rejecting it while Elsa embraces it, and there is something about this fleeing of society that Elsa does that has an LGBTQ plus edge to it. 
Many think that Elsa is a closeted lesbian, and her song Let It Go, which won Best Original Song at the 2014 Oscars, is her coming out anthem. On this thought, Lee notes, We know what we made, but at the same time, I feel like once we hand the film over, it belongs to the world. So I don't like to say anything, and let the fans talk. I think it's up to them. Let's just say it is. The sequel to this hit, Frozen 2, also written and co-directed by Lee, was even more financially successful than the first, but touched on more darker themes. In this story, Anna and Elsa learn that their grandfather made a treaty with a neighboring indigenous tribe, the Northuldras, only to be betrayed and brutally murdered by them. It's a scary idea for children, but the film aims to provide a spotlight for indigenous people and environmentalism, while continuing to maintain strong female leadership. The film does a great job at flipping the story in favor of indigenous people, who have often been villainized in films. We learn that it was actually Elsa and Anna's grandfather who betrayed the Northuldras and murdered their chief. By humanizing the tribe and allowing their story to be heard, Lee creates a much more inclusive environment. And this inclusivity doesn't stop at this film. After being named Chief Creative Officer, Lee wanted to bring diversity to Disney's animation. In the three years since she's been in the position, she's helped films like Raya and the Last Dragon and Encanto get produced. She is also working on musical series for Moana and Tiana. Lee says she wants a diverse workforce in order to find new talent and devise innovative storylines for modern audiences. She believes talent is universal, but opportunities are not. To help underrepresented individuals and communities get their voices heard, she wants to make Disney's rooms stronger. The more diverse the room is, the deeper and more sophisticated the conversation can go. With the Disney Plus pitch program, she wants to allow new artists to pitch projects and to mentor them, allowing them to get access to the proper tools they need to succeed in their own careers, just as she was able to. Jennifer Lee is an icon who has changed the way of animation, Disney, and the film industry as a whole. She continues to work hard to bring inclusivity to the table and to get underrepresented stories heard. Currently, she's working on a film, The Way Between, which she wrote and is producing. Don't forget her name, Jennifer Lee. She will do great things for film and all of its audiences. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of What's Her Name? Be sure to tune in next time to hear more about another badass female filmmaker. We'll see you next time.